Evening everyone, happy Easter and welcome to the next revolution. Yes, it's a holiday, a very sacred one for so many people here and around the world. And you know, we try to be positive on this show, but honestly, as we look around the world this Easter weekend, what do we see? War, chaos, threat, menace, anxiety, fear. This is what you get when America fails to lead. This is what you get when you replace strength with weakness. A friend reminded me of an old saying about Europe's attitude to America. As far as they're concerned, there's only one thing worse than a strong America, and that's a weak America. Some people here don't like the idea of America playing a strong leading role. Why should we be the world's policemen? You hear that a lot, and I understand it. But how do you like the alternative? How do you like war in Europe, terrorists back in Afghanistan, a China-Russia pact, North Korea testing missiles, America coddling enemies like Iran and Venezuela while alienating allies like India, Israel and Saudi Arabia, shambles on a global scale, the exact opposite of what they tell you, the exact opposite of what they promised you. Remember this? America is back, ready to lead the world. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class, and to make America respected around the world again. Oh, respected. Is that what you call it? Is that why the Saudis are selling oil now to China and ditching dollars for yuan? Trump rebuilt that alliance and it helped produce the first Middle East peace deal in decades. Now, the Saudis won't even take Biden's phone call. Here's what they think of him on state TV. But the crisis in Africa, yeah, Russia, yeah, Russia. And I want to talk about the uh, president of Russia, uh, Putin, yeah, Putin. Putin, listen to me. I have a very important message to you. The message is... <laughs> that is how the world sees our respected president who's brought America back, a mumbling, bumbling fool who doesn't know where he is or what he's talking about. Look at India. We've gone from this amazing moment with Trump and Prime Minister Modi to Biden driving India into the arms of China and Russia. This week, he had to beg Modi to come back into the fold and stop buying Russian oil. He was India's external affairs minister's response to that. If you are looking at energy purchases from Russia, I would suggest that your attention should be focused on Europe. I suspect looking at the figures, probably uh, our total purchases for the month would be less than what Europe does in an afternoon. So you might want to think about it. Yeah, you might want to think about it. You might want to think about what India made of your surrender to the Taliban, which put Pakistan, India's mortal enemy, back in the driving seat, threatening India's security. In fact, you might have thought of that before you did it. Now it's probably too late just like it's probably too late to save the Solomon Islands from slipping into Chinese control. The Solomon Islands? Who cares about them? Well, we all should. These islands in the Western Pacific are strategically vital. That's why they saw some of the heaviest fighting in World War II, for example, on Guadalcanal. For years, the Solomon Islands were aligned with the West, even supporting Taiwan. Now look what's happened under Biden. Here's how the New York Times put it. China and Solomon Islands draft secret security pact, raising alarm in the Pacific. Could help the Chinese Navy block shipping routes that played a vital role in World War II. Thank God we put that great foreign policy genius Joe Biden with all his years of experience in charge. Isn't it great to have people around the president who really know what they're doing, who are just professionals, good at governance? What a joke. And their biggest joke, and not a very funny one, is the resurrection of their deal to give Iran nuclear weapons. Obama, Biden, the ludicrous horse-faced plutocrat John Kerry. They sent the Iranians pallets of cash in the dead of night because why not give a terrorist regime more money to spend on more terror campaigns? And they lifted sanctions in exchange for practically nothing except the certainty that Iran would get a nuclear weapon in a few years' time. Trump saw how appalling it all was, withdrew the United States from the agreement and reimposed the suffocating sanctions that the Obama White House waived. But now that team surrender is back in the White House under Biden, instead of thanking Trump for saving them from the consequences of their own idiocy, 
They're trying to put the agreement back together, and this time even worse than before. Once again lifting sanctions, including on oil, you know, just to throw a bit of help to Putin, Xi and the rest of the world's autocrats. And even lifting sanctions on Iran's revolutionary guard corps, removing this foreign terrorist organization from the US list of foreign terrorist organizations. Next, they'll be signing them up as a DNC partner with a speaking slot at the 2024 convention. And unbelievably, the person they're relying on to broker the whole thing is the butcher of Ukraine, Vladimir Putin himself. So Biden randomly blurts out that he wants Putin out of power, but at the same time is begging him to help deliver his flagship foreign policy initiative. Could it get more incompetent and incoherent? Well, yes, it could actually, because part of the deal is money for Iran to contract with Russia to expand its domestic nuclear power program, just as Democrats here close down our domestic nuclear power program. So here's the plan, folks. We'll shut down nuclear power stations in America, because who needs reliable carbon-free electricity anyway? And instead, send billions of dollars to the Iranians to pay Russia, who's threatening us with nuclear war, to build nuclear power stations in Iran. Brilliant! I'm not sure it's even possible to imagine a worse, more clueless, more counterproductive foreign policy than what we've seen from these jokers. I mean, what are they going to do next? Tell Putin he's okay to invade Alaska, say to Xi? Go ahead, have Taiwan, and take Hawaii too if you feel like it. I guess we shouldn't be putting ideas into their head. Now, of course, one of the many allies that Biden and his crew have managed to alienate is one of our closest and most important, and that is Israel. What do they make of all this? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.